Hey everybody, I'm about to make a uh, lazy Sunday afternoon trip to Arden, Delaware and visit my favorite local record store, Jupiter Records. And I'm going to uh, do some crate digging, but I'm also going to trade in some albums for store credit. So uh, let me show you what I'm getting rid of first. And then uh, once I come back from my trip, we'll see what I found. We'll start with the, with the discards, and I'll talk a little bit about why I'm getting rid of these albums. Here's Elvis Sings Flaming Star. I think I got this for free, and, you know, it's not one of the more memorable Elvis albums. Elvis, Almost in Love. Both these Elvis albums are available on Tidal. They're not in the best condition, so I figure, what the heck. Willie Nelson, Stardust. Really nice album by, by Willie, lots of great covers. But again, it's on Tidal. It's not an album I listen to a ton. Willie's not like an essential artist for me, so I can afford to give that one up. Nat King Cole sings for Two in Love. Another pretty sounding album uh, recorded with Nelson Riddle. It's on Tidal. I don't need the vinyl. Judy Garland, Greatest Performances. Again, pick this up in the bargain bin somewhere along the lines. Maybe listen to it once. And, uh, you know, it's got Over the Rainbow on it and lots of other great Judy stuff. But it's on title. Don't need the vinyl. Percy Faith, Black Magic Woman. This is a, a favorite easy listening album of mine. It re really sounds awesome. But it's on title. And as good as the vinyl does sound, I think I can afford to part with it. I love the cover, though. Johnny Mathis, Love is Blue. Somewhere along the line, I was collecting a lot of easy listening artists and pop vocalists. And Johnny's nice and everything, but this this was also on title, and I don't need to keep the vinyl. I'm trying to uh, save shelf space. This is a classic. Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass, Whipped Cream and Other Delights, with that iconic album cover. Uh, you see this all the time in the dollar bins. And this will be another entry. That's on title. Here's probably the most valuable vinyl. I'm, I'm getting rid of Paul Westerberg, Sui King Gratification. It's a favorite album of mine. And uh, I do actually prefer the CD to the vinyl on this one. And I'm just looking to cash out with this one and get some store credit. We'll see what that fetches. Cat Stevens, Is It So? I listened to this one not long ago and gave it a chance, but I, I don't, as as much as I appreciate him experimenting with keyboards and synths and whatnot, this, I don't think the song quality held up so well. And um, it's kind of an aberration in his catalog. So as much as I like Cat Stevens, I think I can give this one away. And also it's on title. All these albums I'm... Or almost all these albums, with a couple exceptions, are available on title. These two are not um, two copies of 20 explosive original hits, original stars. Uh, I have a ton of these Cape Pell compilations, and these just aren't uh, anything I particularly need to have around. Andy Williams, The Other Side of Me. Some of these later 70s Andy Williams albums uh, were not available for streaming, but they have been uh, getting uh, better coverage lately, so I checked on title, and this was th is there, so I can part with it. Yeah, Rodgers and Hammerstein, The King and I. Uh, this is a classic uh, soundtrack album, but it's the sleeve is in such horrible condition; it's really just basically worth nothing. And I'll. I'll if I can find a better copy of this in the bargain bins, I'll, I'll probably pick it up. But this just isn't good enough to keep. Too beat up. Nancy Williams, Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. I really like this album. But you can see the cover has a lot of ring wear. And it is available on Tidal. So uh, I'm going to say goodbye to it. Carmen McRae, nice jazz vocal album. And this, uh, for a while, I don't think was available on Tidal, but now it is. And there's other Carmen McRae on vinyl that I, I will keep around, but this one is, is not as essential for me, even though there's a lot of good stuff on it. I'll listen to it on Tidal. 
How about this living stereo title? Fancy meeting you here. Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney, classic vocalists. And, uh, you know, the album's not in bad shape, but it's just not an album I was listening to a lot. And it is on title, so I added it to my library there. And we'll, we'll trade this one in. The Cal Sills. I think this is the first album, right? Self titled. Uh, this is on title. Uh, I have a friend who's really into the Cal Sills and uh, got me interested, and, and I like them a lot. But again, trying to clear shelf space. This one's in pretty good condition. The cover's in good shape. And then um, this other Cal Sills album is also on title. It's got the gatefold cover. So this one, um, it's good enough for me to have it streamable. And there's a, a couple other Castles albums I'm keeping on vinyl because I didn't find them on title. Here's the Sandpipers, Guantanamera. Uh, Another one you see all the time. I really like the Sandpipers, but I've decided to uh, part ways with all of these Sandpipers albums. They are in the title library now, if I ever need to go back to them. Uh, I hope I don't regret it. And then lastly, another Nancy Wilson album, All In Love Is Fair. Lots of great material on here as well, uh, but you can see it covers in really bad condition and it's in title, so I'll just, I'll just say goodbye to that one too. All right, so I'm off on my trip. We'll see what I come up with when I return. Hopefully, I will come back with less than what I'm leaving with. That's the idea of downsizing. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Oh, one more. Uh, as I talked about in a previous video, I am going to trade in this SACD of Brahms Fourth Symphony with Bernard Heitink and the London Symphony. It just does sort of a flat performance for me. This one might fetch some value too. We'll see. All right, let's see what happens when I get back. Well, I'm back from my trip to Jupiter Records, and here is my record haul that I got back. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. I didn't find anything I wanted to bring home. And to add insult to injury, uh, when I went to trade in the albums I just showed you, uh, the guy who prices the trade-in value uh, was not in today, so they were unwilling to uh, accept my trade-in. I'm going to have to bring the records back. Um, so what I actually ended up doing was on the way home, I, I stopped at Goodwill and I uh, donated most of those albums. Most of them weren't worth much at all. The only ones I kept were, I think, the, the Paul Westerberg and the couple Cal Seals albums, which I'm not sure whether I want to keep or not. So there's like three or four albums that I kept. The rest were, were donated. So, you know, these things happen when we go uh, on our digs. Uh, I did um, browse a little bit in the store, actually a lot. Um, Jupiter Records has a, a huge dollar room. So I scoured that for CDs and maybe about half the vinyl or a third of the vinyl that was in there and a few things I was tempted by there was a couple Ella Fitzgerald albums one that was a vintage uh, Verve label album with a nice uh, photo on the cover but uh, I didn't think the cover was in good enough condition and the, uh, the record looked to be scratched there was uh, another Ella Fitzgerald CD of um, her singing, I think it's the Rogers and Hart songbook, and that was tempting, and there was a Gershwin playing Gershwin CD that was tempting, and a couple other albums. Uh, there was a Peggy Lee vinyl and um, one or two other things. So I had a small stack, and then I just went over. They, they had a lot of classical in the dollar room, too. Um, but I just put them all back on the shelf. I just didn't feel like um, it was justified. So I struck out on the dollar uh, room and then in the main part of the store, uh, I've scoured through the new arrivals and some of the rest of the collection. And the only thing that tempted me was um, Bob Dylan's Saved on vinyl with the original vinyl cover, which is this like hand coming up 
and I don't, uh, I couldn't remember, but I'm almost certain that I have like the later vinyl cover. And they wanted seven or eight dollars for that. Um, so I, I could have gotten that with my store credit, but I just didn't think it was like totally necessary at this time to get that album just for the different cover. And um, other things I was looking for, I didn't find. So this happens maybe about 50% of the time I go into a used record store like that where I, you know, I'm getting more uh, picky, more, much more selective. And it, it's a bit of a disappointment when you don't stumble across something that you're really interested in. But by the same token, I, I am... Uh, uh, there's a good side to that coin. In other words, I'm really satisfied with my record collection. I have most everything I want. And yes, there are certain copies I might want to upgrade or have alternate pressings of, or, you know, there might be different masterings of CDs that I'm interested in. But so many times now when I, when I go to the store and I'm looking through the albums, I feel like you know, I always in the back of my mind think I, I could be streaming this. Do I really need it on CD? Do I really need this on vinyl? One thing, for instance, they had on vinyl um, it's, are, were a couple Time Life compilations, and I, those tend to sound really good, but these were actually vinyl box sets, you know, different um, rock and roll classics from, you know, like 1962 or something like that. There was a couple of those. I think one was from the 50s. That was somewhat tempting, but when I, uh, if I had seen those on CD, I probably would have taken them. Um, but I just didn't see the need to have that on vinyl, so I passed on it. And generally speaking, what I look for when I go to these stores are, are, are compilations, because compilations are not easily found on, on Tidal or Spotify. And... Um, you know, so those sometimes are worth the price. And, you know, other things that just aren't available on Tidal, but that's harder and harder to find. Like, so these uh, streaming services have great coverage these days. And unless it's something that's absolutely essential and important to me or has, like, high nostalgic value, uh, I'm, I'm more than likely to just pass. So... You know, it's hit or miss when you go to the used record shop, isn't it? Anyway, it's not all for naught. I, I did get rid of, you know, 95% of the albums I wanted to discard today. And uh, I donated them good, to Goodwill. Some of you will have, hopefully, some good finds there. And I kept a few albums that do have, like, higher value. And I'll just go back to Jupiter one of these days and, and trade them in when the guy's at work <laughs> so anyway uh hopefully you had better luck this week in your uh, record browsing experience than i did uh, and that constitutes my record hall fail for uh sunday february 4th thanks for watching